functionality, that number will get incremented so that if you're writing an application, you'll be able to look at it and say, oh, well, that's manager interface 1.3, so it doesn't have these things that I know how to use in 1.4. I'll fall back to some other method and, and go on from there. Uh, in the dial plan, there's been lots of interesting things that have uh, occurred, some of them minor, some of them uh, quite useful and major, the last one being the exact same application that was added to the manager interface. So it's actually possible in the dial plan now, if via some logic that you've run, you've found a channel that you want to connect to, a channel that's already up, to just connect the channel you are to that one and disconnect it from whatever it's connected to, and it now becomes the two-ended call that you wanted it to be in the first place. Did I add in there the ability to do incomplete? I don't remember if I put that in. Oh, that's in 1.6. That's never mind. Um, there's now the ability to do custom device states and extension states. Um, and I didn't see this in the change log, which may actually mean that Russell hasn't merged it yet. But one of the comments, one of the, the uh, no, another thing. Uh, one of the things that Ole had on one of his slides about being able to share events um, between asterisk servers um, that was first, as he said, it was first implemented for voicemail, and I've got that on their slide, but I'll talk about it now. Um, so that you don't have to have the SIP phones registered to the same server where the voicemail boxes live now. They can be anywhere in the cluster, it doesn't really matter, and the message waiting events will just propagate to whatever devices care about those. Well, that has now been extended to also device states, which means it's possible to define the presence of a, an extension or the, pres the, the availability of a device, yeah, no, in 161, uh, that's, uh, the availability of a device based on phones that live on multiple asterisk servers. They do not all have to be tied to one asterisk server anymore. So there's lots of other things there. We've gotten a lot of interest uh, in the community lately from doing more complex enum lookups and Dundee lookups. Um, we actually have um, a couple of people in the professional services department at Asterisk that use Dundee very heavily to make call routing decisions about availability of servers and really interesting things that I'm sure Mark never envisioned it would be used for. Um, I'm sure there's many more things in the SIP channel driver. These were just some things that I pulled out of the change log. One of them was the one that, um, that Ole mentioned, adding real-time text support. Uh, TCP and TLS support is in there, although it has some known, um, well, I have to say it has some known bugs. It also has some known flaws. So we're still working on those, so it's marked as experimental for the moment. And another thing that's been, uh, I would say, in demand, that's a fairly uh, nice way of putting it, uh, for a long time in the community, is to have SIP session timer support. So that if you've got a call up and an endpoint just disappears for whatever reason, it loses power, the network gets, the network link breaks, or whatever it might be, or in the case of some IP phones, the phone just decided to reboot. Um, in the past, Asterisk would not know that that call was gone, um, especially if the media wasn't flowing through Asterisk, if it was going through some other path. That's now been taken care of. So an asterisk can now act as a stun client so that when asterisk is sitting behind a network address translation device, it can figure out automatically what its external IPs are and get port numbers and other interesting things. Um, I already covered the really big thing here, which is that the events can be distributed across multiple servers now. Um, and I don't know how much, uh, how much has SMDI ever been used in Europe. I know it's been really popular in, in the U.S. for a long time. Um, so SMDI is an interface that allows a voicemail system, and a voicemail feature server, to connect to a legacy PBX, and when it receives calls forwarded to it because someone's phone was busy or whatever, it gets information about that. Um, a large university in the United States actually paid a developer and then we helped quite a bit to build all of this support in asterisk so that they can replace their voicemail system off of their telco hosted PBX which they've been paying for 20 some years for um, for 27,000 users with an asterisk voicemail implementation and they've been able to do that now seamless well not seamlessly obviously the presentation of the voicemail system is different but there's been no need to make any modifications to the telco's phone system at all for that to work. Uh, the mailbox polling is really important. Well, yeah, I suppose then the, the yeah, the, uh, the other thing that happened because of that event system, because 
because messages being placed into your mailbox or the last unread message in your mailbox being read are now events that are pushed out into the event network, there's no reason for the channel drivers and everything else to be constantly polling your mailbox anymore to see if you have messages that are new or if you're, all your other messages are gone. Um, that works quite well when Asterisk is managing the voicemail system all on its own. Uh, there are applications, though, where the voicemail storage area is actually manipulated by other applications. For example, in Asterisk 1.4, we had the ability to store voicemail directly in a mail server via IMAP, uh, which is really, really nice for being able to do unified email and voicemail in the same inbox. However, if you go into your mail client and you read read three voicemails and mark them all red, Asterisk needs to know that those are all marked red now so it can turn a little red light off on your phone. So that still does require some polling. Um, I don't know how many of you use CDR uh, database. CDR is stored directly in databases. One of the problems with the CDR system in the past was that you couldn't add your own fields to it. So a community developer um, added uh, the ability to add your own fields to it, but then getting those stored out in a database became the next problem. That has now been resolved, and it's been resolved in a almost configuration-free way. So if your database contains a column name that matches the name of some variable you've added to your call detail record in the dial plane, it just automatically gets populated in the database. Um, so you can add things on the fly, modify the dial plane in the database, you don't have to restart asterisk or anything. So that's a, that's a very, very nice thing. Some probably uh, less widely used things, but still interesting stuff. Um, there's been a console channel driver in Asterisk for quite some time. I don't know how many people use it because it's not really heavily used, but it's when you've actually got audio on your system that you're running Asterisk on. For example, if I'm running Asterisk on my laptop and I want to be able to do development and just generate a call, um, including audio, that's been possible for a while, but he used audio interfaces that were very Linux specific. Uh, the same person that Ole mentioned before about getting stuck in airports and writing code decided that he was going to change that because he does all of his, the bulk of his development on a PowerBook, which of course he's not running Linux on, he's running Mac OS X on and none of those would work. So we now have a um, channel driver that uses a portable audio library. It works on lots and lots of operating systems. And another group of community people have extended that channel driver to support video. So it's actually possible now to use Asterisk as a client to initiate an audio and video call from a laptop. And very recently, as in about two weeks ago, this work has not been merged yet, but in about, about two weeks ago, they announced, and this is a group of students at the University of Pisa in Italy, by the way, that's working on this. They have extended it to be able to make Asterisk run as a plug-in inside Firefox, believe it or not. So it is actually possible now to use Asterisk as a fully featured audio and video soft phone inside Firefox as a plug-in. Um, when they first proposed it, we all looked at that and went, you're out of your mind. Why would you want to do that? And then they started demonstrating it and went, well, wait a minute. Look at all the things it already supports. I mean, it supports every voice over IP protocol and all kinds of other stuff. So it will be interesting to see where that leads um, as they continue to do that. Um, we now have native SS7 support in the Zaptel channel driver, uh, soon to be renamed to be not Zaptel anymore for other reasons, but that's why I didn't put it in here. That is both the uh, U.S. and non-U.S. versions of SS7 are supported. Um, this is for trunking applications. It does not support SS7 application queries and things like that at this point. Um, but it, it certainly works quite well for trunking. Trunking applications, we've had a number of people have been using it in production and talking about it on the asterisk SS7 mailing list for months now, even though it hasn't been released yet, and have been quite happy with it. Uh, lots of other interesting little things. Um, I don't know how popular Nortel is over here, so having a channel driver for Nortel IP phones is probably not all that big a deal in Europe. Uh, it's it's quite uh, quite a big thing in the United States. Um, from a community aspect, that's been quite interesting because the protocol that those phones speak is totally undocumented. So that was done by a group of community developers in Canada who just reverse engineered the protocol and wrote their own channel driver for it. Um, no, I wasn't involved with this at all. No, many years ago. No. That's great channel. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so initially Nortel wasn't very happy about this because of course they don't document that protocol for a reason and then they said wait a minute <laughs> if this means we get to sell more of our brand new IP phones okay we'll sell brand new IP phones they don't get to sell the PBX's to go with them but they actually are quite nice phones so now